South Windsor Citadel Sunday morning meeting. Welcome to those who have gathered together in this place of worship and welcome to those who are in our community of faith and worshiping online with us. Whatever this week has brought you, whatever you may bring with you this morning, may we all come, let us rejoice to sing, God is love. And when we leave this place and our time is together is complete, may we go out into the community as a reflection of that love. Amen. Good morning. It's good to be back with you today. I'll invite you to stand as we share in our opening song, Holy, Holy, Holy.
scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 7 and verses 24 to 29 and these are the words of Jesus himself as he spoke to his disciples and of course uh, that includes us and it's entitled the wise and foolish builders therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand the rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished these sayings, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and not as teachers of the law. May the Lord bless them to us the reading of his word this morning. And shall we bow in prayer together. Father God, we come to you in a spirit of thankfulness today, thankfulness for all that you have done for us, for all that you provide for us from day to day. We are so grateful that we live in a land of Canada where we have so much in abundance of, um, compared to other parts of this world. Lord, we come to you asking that you will bring peace to our world. There is tragedy going on in so many places. There's war in Ukraine, and there's protesters in Iran. There's uh, other things going on in the Americas. And Father, we just ask that somehow you will speak to the people that during these times of discontent, that they might sense your presence, and that indeed we might sense your presence working in our world around us. We pray that you will give us peace in our own hearts because we get troubled when we look around and see all the things that are happening and we wonder about the future. So we pray, Lord, that you will give us a sense of peace uh, in our own hearts this day, in our own community, in our own church. Father, we also bring to you those who are sick, and there are many within our own church family who are not well today. These are times that we can't understand, and we wonder why so many should be ill with such serious things. But Lord, you know, and you are there for them, and we pray for them right now that you're, we will comfort and strengthen. And Lord, particularly we bring to you Stuart, um, you know his needs, you know the seriousness of his condition. We pray, Lord, that as they journey to London on Tuesday, on Tuesday or journey on Monday, and as he has his surgery on Tuesday, that you will indeed give that family peace. We think of Diane, Rose, and Ken, and Kathleen and Daniel, and we pray for them as a family that they might be comforted and strengthened by you, knowing that you are in charge. We pray for the doctors and the nurses that will be ministering to him, will be, um, be with him, and we pray that you will give them guidance. Lord, we thank you because you have provided uh, so much in the way of health care, and you have provided uh, the means to do things that in years gone by we would never dream were possible. But Lord, we also know that there is great risk in these things. And so we pray that during this time that you will help us to bring comfort and strength to the family and that you will give them peace in their hearts as well. We also know, Lord, that there are many in our congregation that are struggling, struggling with various and assorted things, struggling maybe with finances, with jobs, or the lack thereof, with the cost of inflation and feeding their family these days. It is difficult, it is challenging, 
and we don't know or understand just what this means in so many ways. But Lord, too, we pray for them, for each one who struggles, and we all struggle in our own way with our own difficulties, and we pray that we might sense your peace in our hearts, knowing again that you understand and that you have promised grace and strength in these situations. You haven't promised that there would be no anxiety. You haven't promised that there would be no struggles, but you have promised to be there with us in those times. And so we commit our congregation as a whole to you, and we pray for them. And we pray for those in our communities that are struggling at this time as well. We thank you for your grace, for your enduring and strengthening grace that is with us. We also pray, Lord, during this season of change that you will continue to be with us as well. Sometimes it's very hard to know why we need to change. We're comfortable in the way we are. And we just, it's, even as we get older, it's even more difficult. <clears throat> but Lord, um, we also understand that sometimes in the seasons of change in our lives, there are good things that happen. And we pray, Lord, that that might be so in this time, in this community, in our church community, that as things um, go forward here, that we will understand, we will take time to understand and comprehend that change is a necessary part of life and that we will be acceptant of that. We thank you as we look back on life for the seasons of change that have come. They haven't been easy, but you've been in them. And so we do pray that you will continue to help us to keep our eyes on you that knowing, because as we keep our eyes on you, we know that you are in control of each and every situation. Again, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here, to gather together in your house this day. And we just pray that each one that is here might sense your presence in a very special way that we might go forth from here, strengthened and encouraged in our faith, ready to do what you ask us to do and be what you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Father God, as we open your word again, we're grateful for the opportunity to do so. The freedom that we have, the privilege that it is, that we get to be together in this way in your house. We pray, Lord, that we will receive your spirit this morning. The words that you would have us to hear. Maybe they encourage, will encourage us today, challenge us, or affirm what we're already doing. We pray, Lord, that your word would open our eyes to your, to your amazing love this morning. We ask this in your name. Amen. Do you remember how much fun it was to build a sand castle? Who here loves the sand? Who here hates the sand? All right, this may not go well. <laughs> As a kid, I made my fair share of sand castles. And as a dad, I also uh, made a few decent sand castles, although it wasn't, soon, wasn't long before the kids overtook me in their creative abilities to make a beautiful sand castle. Remember filling that pail with that wet kind of sand that the, then would take the shape of the pail? And you'd do that several times and you'd make several towers, uh, castle towers around, right? With the pail, you put the, 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 the sand in, you flip it over, put it in the sand, and start with your tower. And then maybe you'd scoop some of that wet sand with your hand and you'd connect the two towers with some strong walls. And then you'd take some more sand and you'd fill in some of the holes and the cracks and the crevices. And you begin to sort of see your vision for this majestic castle taking form. Maybe you decide to, to dig a moat around your castle. You scoop that and you make it go away and then you pick up some uh, water in your pail and you dump the water in the moat. It's beginning to take shape. And then maybe you find yourself a stick and you, you put some details into your castle. Maybe you do some stonework. Maybe you, you detail out the doors and maybe you, you take a stick and you put a leaf on it and now you've got a flag on the top of your castle. And maybe after a few hours you have this amazing, incredible, majestic castle that you've, you've put together yourself. If you build it close to the water, you can access the water easily, and more often than not, the best sand castle making sand is wet and it's closer to the water, right? You don't have to take long trips back and forth from your castle to the lake, back to the castle to the lake, getting water, getting sand, making sure it takes longer for the build if you're too far away from the water, right? You might even be able to be that way inclined to be able to connect your moat with the tide, right? You just The water comes rushing in around your moat like that. You, you may have been able to do that. But what happens if you make your castle too close to the water? Well, then oftentimes the water can overtake your creative construction. The tide rolls in. The water sweeps in over the moat and onto the towers and through the walls and the details are now erased. The flag falls and the hours of manicuring are all for naught. What you're left with is a mound of mud, an image of its former glory. Now the water is not concerned with your efforts or the time you've put in. It's just doing what water does. The, tides roll, the tide rolls in, the waves crash the shore, the water moves in, filling in every gap, displacing anything that cannot stand up to its penetrating presence. Sand is shifty, isn't it? It moves well, it's easily moved, it can be easily manipulated. Add some water, add dry sand, let the sun bake it, shape it with a stick, put it in a pail, and it takes the shape of the pail, and you can spend a relatively small amount of time and you can create something incredible. It's easy to find. The beach is full of it beautiful white sand or dark red sand or light brown sand. It's easy to find. Your golf ball seems to find it easy, right? <laughs> it is readily available. It's also something that breaks down quickly. The wind will create a sandstorm. 
The water will erode or dissolve it. The heat will crack it and make it unbearable to walk on or to live in. It's not something to build something with or something to build on. Sand is easy to work with. It looks good. But it's not really a sustainable building material, is it? Now, I looked this up on Wikipedia. I think it's true. Just listen to this. Wikipedia tells us that rocks erode or weather over a long period of time, mainly by water and wind, and their sediments are transported downstream. These sediments continue to break apart into smaller pieces until they become fine grains of sand. The type of rock the sediment originated from and the intensity of the environment give different compositions of sand. The most common rock form sand is granite, where the feldspar minerals dissolve faster than the quartz, causing the rock break, to break down into smaller pieces. In high energy environments, rocks break apart much faster than in more calm settings. Do I like that? I think that would preach. I should make a note of that. For in high energy environments, rocks break apart faster than in more calm settings. Sand was once rocks, but over time has been eroded by its environment. Sand were rocks, but over time, because of their environment, they have eroded. Sometimes I wonder if our environment can cause erosion in our lives and turn us to sand. Jesus experienced people trying to shake his faith. The religious leaders tried to catch him in impossible riddles and conundrums. Like, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Show us a sign from heaven. What is it okay to divorce? Should we pay our tax? Should we stone this woman? Which is the greatest commandment? In preparation for his ministry, Jesus spent 40 days in the desert. What is the desert? Sand Central. <laughs> the evil one tempted him and attempted to erode his faith in his father with fame, power, and control. So Jesus' message to us, after all he was tempted to do, is to have a firm foundation. To stay focused on the elements of a rock-solid relationship with the Father. Sometimes I worry, we too often, we far too often give in to those temptations. This is what I mean. We've allowed our faith and our function as his church to be eroded by fame, power, and control. And when I say his church, I mean Big C, the church. We have much to answer for as it concerns the church and power. Abuse, mistreatment, ridicule has too often been associated with his church. We have allowed our message and our witness to be eroded, to turn into sand. Like many places, we have issues of management and leadership and accountability and ownership and purpose. We enjoy being on top or in control, but forget how to treat people with respect and dignity. Too often we forget it's the sheep. <laughs> That's our reason for being the shepherd. And God has placed us there to care for them. And our compassion is our rock, and often that turns to sand. Some want to be noticed, not just to be seen, but to be a, a big, significant deal. Rock star preachers, organizational gurus, the consultant with the silver bullet, and too often instead of faithful preachers to those right in front of us, we wish for thousands of followers. And our calling, which is to be our bedrock, our life becomes eroded and turns in the sand. It's our relationship with God, our encounters with Jesus, and the very presence of the Holy Spirit that is our firm foundation, the rock on which we build our lives upon. 
when he shows up and is faithful through every season, when sickness arrives at our doorstep, he is faithful. When our friendships are broken, when our job is unsettled, when our kids are distant, when our finances are tight, when he seems worlds away, I wonder. Too often we forget to read his word and fill our minds and our soul with his message of hope and instructions for life, and we wonder why life feels like sand in our feet. We neglect our worship. We don't feel like coming to church. We don't think we need to give our tithe. We don't make the effort to connect with others. We expect it to feed us, but we don't put anything into it. And we wonder why life feels like the sand is shifting below our feet. Too often we fear sharing our faith. We figure it's someone else's job. It's not my gift. I wouldn't know what to say. Yet we wonder why our worship services aren't attended like they used to. Where? Where are the people? We wonder why life feels like the hot sand under our feet. Too often, I wonder if we ignore the call to prayer. It's something I'll get to. I plan to do that. It's something I figure others are doing. We just figure God knows what I need and what I want. Yet we wonder sometimes why he feels so distant. We wonder why we have a hard time dealing with life's up and downs. We wonder why we feel so alone. We wonder why life feels like sand sifting through our toes. In Jesus' words, he says to his disciples, and as it was reminded to us today, he says to us, everyone who hears these words of mine, and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. I looked it up in a few different translations, and nowhere does it say, Every, any, everyone who hears these words of mine and understands them is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Everywhere it says, put into practice, act. There is a verb there of doing. Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man. You know, I, I read over this story sometimes. I'll confess to you, I read this over and I go, nobody is dumb enough to build their house on sand, are they? Like, is this, anal is this analogy kind of missing the mark here? Because nobody builds their house on sand. But those beach houses look pretty nice, don't they? But not so nice when you see them wash away into the sea, right? We believe that he is faithful through every season. Amen? He is faithful through every season. Because when the rains come, and they have poured, haven't they? In your relationships, in your health issues, in your cost of living, when the winds blow and they have toppled over quite a few lives lately, haven't they? With loss and grief and disappointment. Yet we know we are safe with you. Amen? Amen. We know we are safe with you. We know that we are going to make it through this, all the storms and the pressure and the chaos of life. Anything that life can throw at us because our house is built on a firm foundation. Our house is built on you. Amen? Amen. We can stand firm on the rock. I believe we're experiencing a new season. And as Ecclesiastes reminded us, as Solomon's word reminded us, there is a time for everything. A season for every activity under the heavens. A season of change. A time to embrace the chaos, the challenges, and the change. A time to remember what got us here. A time to be grateful for those who helped build this foundation. A time to embrace the change and listen to Jesus' words and to act on them. Amen? A time to build our relationship with him by prayer, reading the word, sharing our faith, worship, and investing into others. Mark Buchanan, in his book, Spiritual Rhythms, 
I'm be sharing a little bit of that over this series. He makes this statement about this season of fall. The heart of fall isn't a word expectant. If we've prepared well in spring, plowing and sowing and planting, then we wait in an expectancy of hope. <coughs> if we've not prepared well, if we, we will wait in an expectation of disappointment. So with expectancy, we will continue to build our lives on Christ, the solid rock. We focus our attention on the traps and temptations that are put before us by the evil one, attempting to erode our faith. We will be focused on the blessings that God has in store for us as we serve and worship and honor him. Amen? Are you with me? No more sand in our feet. Most of you don't like that anyway. No more shifting sand through our lives. No more sand burning our toes. Say no to the erosion of your faith by the world and by the evil one. Stand firm on the rock. Warren Wiersbe in his commentary says this about this particular portion of scripture. The foundation in this parable is obedience to God's word. Obedience that is evidence of a true faith. Now the two men in this story have much in common. Both of these men had desires to build a home. Both built houses that looked good and sturdy. It doesn't say that he built his house, house with sand. He built it on sand. Both houses looked good and were sturdy. But when the judgment came, the storm, one of the houses collapsed. What was the difference? Not the mere external looks to be for sure. The difference was in the foundation. The successful builder dug deep and set his house on a solid foundation. Friends, as we go about our lives and as we find ourselves in this new season, let us continue to pray for the foundation of this church and the new season that is upon us. Let us be ready for the provision, resources, and blessing that God will bring to this church. Let us pray for our lives and a firm foundation. No more sand, no more neglecting or fear or ignoring or forgetting our relationship with Jesus. Let us continue to pray for our loved ones, amen? That they may know the transformative power of Jesus Christ. Let us pray that God will show us the way. We may have a hope, we may have a desire, but we need him to show us the way. And let us pray that God will bring others to join us in this journey. As I was preparing this and thinking about the whole idea of sand and foundation, this thought came to me. Just work with me on this for a second. As fun as it is, to build that amazing sandcastle, we wish our lives a much different result, don't we? Because I was thinking, nobody plans to take their sandcastles home with them, do they? Nobody builds their sandcastles on a piece of plywood to take home. You don't see many trucks on the highway with sandcastles in the back. And nobody is renting a U-Haul to bring their creations back to enjoy. It is temporary meant to be left behind, to let the elements dry it up, for the waves to wash it away, and for that little kid who's been dying to drop kick it into oblivion to have at it. Maybe those were your kids. So as we leave this place, my friends, leave your sand castles behind. Let the elements take care of it. Let the water wash it away. And let Frankie do his worst. Because we know this to be true. Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. We recognize that there is a time for everything. A season for every activity under heaven. And we realize that there is a time to plant and a time to uproot a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. And the time for refrain from embracing is over. 
It's a time to embrace the change and listen to Jesus' words and act on them. So today, I pray, as a church, as a church family, we will make the decision to focus, to continue to focus on our rock solid foundation, to avoid the erosion of our faith, and to let God bring us blessing and peace today. We're going to spend some time in quiet reflection. Kathy's going to come up. I think she, I'm going to ask her just to play over the melody maybe once or so. I think it's always good to sort of pause. Sometimes um, I say a lot of stuff. Sometimes it makes sense to me. Sometimes it doesn't. And I think sometimes it's good to just pause and give your souls a chance to sort of listen to that still small voice from the Holy Spirit speaking. And maybe there's something that you'll, you're wrestling with or thinking about. Or, so I think sometimes it's good not to just to sing right away, but just to pause. So I'm gonna ask Kathy to just play over this tune and give us a moment just to pause and think about what we've heard from the Lord and allow his spirit to continue to speak in our hearts.
thank you for these precious moments. We thank you for this sanctuary that we can come every week and we can sense your presence. But we never take for granted and forget the fact that you go with us every day. As we are followers of you, as we've accepted you into our life, your presence of your Holy Spirit goes with us when we're in our neighborhoods, at work, in the grocery store, and we have opportunity to shine our light wherever we go and to sense and know and be assured of your presence wherever we go. So Lord, I pray for those today who maybe needed to hear this as it affirmed what they've been doing, as it challenged them to let their sandcastles go. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would continue to work in our hearts and minds as we walk into this new season. We ask all this in your name. We'll invite you to stand. We'll sing our final song together. Let me share in a spoken benediction with you, and then we will sing our son benediction. Just as God's word was sent into the world to heal and redeem, so God sends you into the world this day to be light and love, healing and hope. Go now to be light for the world, and may the grace and peace of God, the creator, the redeemer, and sustainer come upon you this day and remain with you always.